Welcome uh, everybody here back to uh, Siegel Talks at the Martin E. Siegel Theater Center, the Graduate Center CUNY here in Manhattan. And uh, it's been a complicated time, of course, for many, many weeks and months. Uh, things are becoming even more complex. Uh, shootings on the streets, riots, uh, uh, for very good reasons. Uh, um, the uh, racial tensions, uh, the unsolved problems of this society uh, are becoming openly visible uh, more than before. They were always there. And uh, coronavirus uh, uh, really um, served as a microscope um, that uh, uh, lets us observe what we do. Um, it's uh, Richard Schechner compared it to a few nuclear reactor that uh, burned out, uh, the roof is open and now we see often with horror what, what is happening, over 100,000 uh, deaths. Uh, one out of four American out of work, of official jobs, uh, this is in incredible numbers. And, um, and so uh, things are out of joint and um, artists, as always, uh, uh, over centuries have been hit hardest first uh, in such uh, upheaval in society. That's why art is significant. It detects early on um, uh, what is happening, what how reality is outside stuff. Often we do not really see right away, but uh, artists are able to see it. Uh, they are often uh, uh, foreshadowing in their work, uh, and anticipating what might be what might be coming in the histories of freedom and the fight for freedom and the history of liberties, art has been on the right side. Has made an enormous contribution to know that life and ideas are up for discussion. That you can view things from different sides. That uh, a literal interpretation. Uh, often is deadly and that there are higher laws we have to listen to as Antigone uh, taught us early on in one of the oldest plays of mankind that uh, they are laws of, of the moment but they are also eternal laws, laws of human um, significance and of mankind and uh, that is what she did when she followed uh, her own voice and not the political rules and um, we have been talking to many, many, many artists now in our nine weeks, so many great artists from all around the world, from all continents. And, um, and uh, today uh, it is our uh, privilege to have with us um, a speaker uh, from um, Hong Kong, um, Hoi Fai Vu. Um, and um, and um, we are happy to have him here. Carol Martin also said, you know, this is one of the artists you really, really should talk to and should talk about. And, um, and uh, so we're hearing now from a second time uh, from, from Hong Kong. Um, is, uh, I don't see um, Fai at the moment um, on the screen, uh, but maybe he is reconnecting. He's an artistic director of the Pence Theater. Uh, in Hong Kong, he is a very significant member uh, of uh, the Hong Kong uh, theater scene over uh, decades. He uh, is deeply involved in the arts development, art management um, of the scene, has received many, many, uh, many awards. And as a director also, he has um, uh, put his um, ideas on stages. And Bogart said in the talk this week when she said, you know, we see how a brain works on stage and uh, on in action, uh, thoughts uh, that become actions. And it's an important uh, form of uh, participating in life instead of writing it on a paper or painting a painting. It's thought that develops in front of our eyes. We look at it, the distance between those things and it reflects on us. So um, uh, Fai, thank you so much for, for joining us. Uh, sorry about my long introduction. And, uh, but uh, uh, where are you right now and what time is it? Well, uh, I'm in my office in the studio of um, by well, well, my theater company, and uh, it's uh, about midnight. We are twelve hours ahead of your of your time. So, just a new day started in Hong Kong. Yes. <laughs> So tell yeah. us a bit uh, what's going on. Uh, of course, big news. We can I come to that later of, of things. But what is the situation uh, in Hong Kong at the moment when it comes to Corona? 
Uh, well, uh, well, in terms of Corona, is uh, uh, is better. In fact, we well, we still have some cases, but they are all well imported cases and uh, local cases. We there have been uh, for two weeks. We don't have uh, local cases, so it seems it seems getting better now, and everything is uh, going to resume. Uh, but unfortunately, yeah, theater is not well. I think hopefully by the end of June, theater, we can have a live audience. But uh, mm -hmm. yeah, not not till mid June. And unfortunately, I originally I, I scheduled a, a production to be performed in uh, from twelve to fourteenth of June. And just well, just last week, just a few days ago, um, well, we 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 were informed that that the, the production can't have. Well, the theater allow us to get in the theater to do rehearsals, but they well because the theater is uh, controlled well controlled by the government, and the government uh, orders that that we can't have live audience. So it's a very, in fact, quite ridiculous situation that we can go into the theater only for rehearsals, but we can't have live audience. Yeah. Hmm. So um, at the moment, you don't have restrictions. You can go out on the street. Uh, you do. You have to wear a mask. Um, and uh, are shops open? Restaurants? Uh... Yes, they they have a certain restrictions. Like uh, in the restaurants, only eight. Well, oh, oh, well, at the, uh, each table can only serve eight people, but somehow is uh, because the situation seems getting better. So is well getting loosened now. Uh, I think about two um, one month ago is still very strict. It means that uh, there will uh, some some officers will go into the restaurants and and check, and if they are not uh, stick to the rules, they will issue warnings or yeah even mm -hmm. a fine. But uh, now it's well because it seems everything is getting uh, getting back to normal. So yeah. Mm -hmm. So I think we all think Hong Kong, Taiwan, especially Singapore, also South Korea, they uh, did fast measures, had a very good system in place after the SARS virus. Um, so do you felt uh, in a way your government in that, uh, uh, in that situation when it came to Corona, it, that worked well and everybody uh, followed? Uh, I well, I, I I won't say I won't say the government worked very well. <laughs> it's all because of the 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 all the citizens speak because the SARS the memory, although mm -hmm. it's already seventeen years ago, but mm -hmm. it's still very vivid in our mind. So that we 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 did learn uh, hard lessons from that, and so everyone is uh, in Hong Kong. We have. Um, Oh, well, we we are quite disciplined ourselves. So uh, everybody will wear a mask. Uh, quite as soon as there seems to be there there there, there was an uh, outbreak. So yes, I think it's because the situation is um, getting controlled so soon. I think because people are very well disciplined and mm -hmm. um, sometimes a bit over. Disciplined, but uh, yeah, mm -hmm. well, so that's why we we are um, the situation is un under control. Yes, mm -hmm. the government has done um, all right. I wouldn't say it is 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 uh, super super uh, good, but uh, of course not too bad. But uh, I I will I will uh, give the credit to our Hong Kong people, not the government. Mm -hmm. Very significant. And of course, you bit have the tradition of wearing a mask. It's not as foreign um, as to uh, Europe or to North America, where we don't really yes. have that um, um, experience and where we always thought uh, people are wearing masks because they are afraid to get infected. But actually, people were wearing masks because they felt they had an infection, a cough, a virus, and they did not want to share it. And so you were ahead of us um, in, in, in that way. And politicians haven't been paying attention, of course, to the healthcare system. It's catastrophic uh, in the US and also many other countries, so Mexico is 
Brazil, yeah. Spain, yeah. So, but but I think we also we as people, we ourselves perhaps haven't been as careful and no longer were thinking about the threat. So I think we guys um, were. Yeah, I think I, I think it's because well, um, we, we sort of we have dif different mindsets. I think in Hong Kong because uh, people would say that uh, you you are. Uh, you 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 view wearing a mask as a well, only a patient will well only a, a person who has sickness uh, 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 will wear a mask. But in Hong Kong, we we well after SARS, especially after SARS, we don't view it this way. We think that is a kind of protection. So wearing a mask does not mean that we you have caught the illness. So I think. Two different types of mindset, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, how is it for theater artists? Are you getting support uh, from your country, from your communities, from your cities? Uh, well, the government did make some allowance uh, for us, uh, but it's very minimal. <laughs> uh, for example, like uh, uh, um, uh, I think last month they. Had they 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 gave a plan that you can apply for some so for some funding, but it's only the maximum amount is only well seven thousand and five hundred Hong Kong dollars, and well, in 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 terms of Hong Kong living standard is very very um, minimal. I would say yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, it, how much is it compared to US dollars? Seven thousand is around 1,000 1, uh, US dollars. Uh, yes. so like a one-time payment. It's uh, a one-time payment. Yeah, but it's so, supposed to last to to help you through several months. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. and it's, it's not, not possible. And now the societies have to show their flags and see where the support for the arts that is so often uh, um, um, written on those flags, but now they really have to, to show them. How is it for your company? So um, what are your members are doing? Are they at home? Are they working? Um, will they be rehearsing for that show where you say, we can do it, but we have no audience? How are they doing? Well, in I think in, in February and March, when the, the well, the situation it was really severe. Well, we, we had to stop uh, even rehearsals. And, uh, but now after, I think in starting from April, we slowly getting back our, um, our pace. And because we, we, we assume things are getting better and it seems really things are getting better. So, well, to put on, a, a, to stage a show, we need time to rehearse. So we can't, we, uh, when we project that uh, in July or even in June, uh, we, can, we can really stage a production. Then we, we, we have to start rehearsal because as I said, well, our, uh, uh, coming production is in mid uh, June, so I had to start rehearsal in April. And yes, in the beginning of uh, in, in the beginning phase when we had rehearsal, all the actors have have to wear masks, and uh, it's a bit difficult for the director to mm -hmm. <laughs> to see <laughs> to yeah to see to 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 give comments when all the actors are wearing masks, mm -hmm. and yeah, but uh, we do we we. Did have to cancel uh, or postpone some shows. We had a, uh, we had a shows in, we had a performance in February, and then that has to be postponed to um, July now. And well, hopefully it, it it will be done in July. It can be done in July. And then we had and we had another well, stage reading performances in March. And then we had to we have to cancel that. And then at first we think we can do it in April, but then uh, I think around the end of March we 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 were hit by the second one of the virus. So we had to stop the we have we have to uh, reschedule that again. 
and and later we I had to we we scheduled that to May, but then it's still it was still impossible to do it in the theater. So I had to change it into uh, a live broadcast in in on the internet. Yes, but uh, the problem is we there was one a play I want to do in the stage reading section that is indecent. Paula Vogel's Indecent, Paula I think Vogel's you know, indecent. yes, mm -hmm. I think you know that play, right? Yeah, yeah, and, uh, great. Yes. came to the Siegel Center, we did an evening with her, oh, yeah. Great, great, yeah, so um, I, 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 at first, I, well, we had to, as I said, we had to reschedule it to, well, from March to April and then to May, <laughs> and then, uh, and I decided to, to live broadcast it, but, but then I got the reply from Paula's agent that we can't, we can't do it uh, uh, through live broadcast because the copyright has uh, has been sold to to a company. You know, the stage version, the Hollywood, uh, the Broadway version has has been sold, uh, and it's now uh, uh, broadcast in on the net. So Paula can't uh, give me the right to live broadcast it. So I have to do it live, <laughs> mm -hmm. and uh, mm -hmm. so and um, and then. At first, I was really, really worried because all the well, the, the situation in Hong Kong is like that. We, well, that small company like us, we don't have regular um, actors. So every time uh, uh, we have to get actors project by project. So when when uh, uh, so the uh, the the cast I that was involved in the stage version of Indecent, they. I was afraid that they had uh, already commit other things in in for example in June in July, so I, I was afraid that I can't really find a time to to do it. But luckily, I, I finally I find a time to do it in next week next weekend in my own uh, studio. So mm -hmm. I don't yes yeah, so I I can still do the play. So Although you're going to present the show in your own studio live yes, to a very yes. small number of audiences. Yes, a very small number. Only How 10. many people will come? Will people wear masks, actors, audiences? Uh, the audience, we, we, we will require the audience to wear masks, and, uh, but uh, the actors won't wear masks. Because as I said, now the situation mm -hmm. is getting so, better. So How many people our... will come in your studio? Because this might be a solution, you know, that people go to their living rooms, their rehearsal studios, small intimate places. How many people will you let in? Only 10. 10 people. Because and how many actors will be involved? <laughs> Seven actors, yes. Seven so it's almost, like, yeah, almost equal zero. to the number of the audience, yes. Which is interesting and makes something also unique and, and uh, uh, Yes, it's only, uh, well, well, I, I, that, uh, I think the, the play uh, Indecent uh, um, teaches me that we, we need to do it even in times of difficulty. Yes. Yeah. 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 So, um, well, well uh, anyway, I'm glad that, that we, we can find a solution to, to it. Yes. What is the philosophy of you as a theater maker and your company? Why do you do theater? What is your work all about? Um, well, now my theater company, we, we, have sort of, we have sort of a mission that we, we are with in the stage, but we keep an eye on the society. And um, it means that we, we want to do some productions that will encourage the audience to, uh, when they walk out of the theater, when they have seen our performances, they will think about some issues we in the play, in the production. And that issue should be related to our everyday life, should be related to the society. So for example, in, um, and, and that's why I think uh, uh, um, a few years ago, we have to start to focus on documentary theater. Um, although that's, that's not, not the only thing we'll do, but uh, documentary theater is a, 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 a um, uh, it's a major thing in my theater company. We have um, done some translated documentary theater works like Laramie Project, Gross mm -hmm. Indecency, 
and yes, uh, um, translated documentary theatre plays like that. And we have also done some original documentary theatre works, like uh, 1960, um, 1967. That's the year, a very important year in Hong Kong history when there was a, a big riot uh, happening in Hong Kong, and it lasted for almost half a year. Yeah, from mid uh, 67 to the beginning of 68. And that was a, like a, a taboo in Hong Kong history because that is the, the riot was, um, the riot start because the, you, you know, in the 60s, um, Hong Kong was very corrupted and all the, well, we, we don't have the um, ICAC, uh, I mean the, the the department that uh, fight against the corruption. We we don't have that department in that time, so the police force was very the police force the uh, fire the the government are very co corrupted and the situation the um, especially the 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 lower class in Hong Kong are very. Um, the poor people are really poor to see the situation. So there there was a lot of um um anger and uh, discontent in 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 the general pu public so um in so in 1967 there was a, a, a sit in a protest by um, a factory by uh, some factory workers because the the uh, factory boss has in, had has imposed some very strict harsh conditions on the workers and the workers try to fight for a better well working condition so in the beginning is a sit in and then the leftist in hong kong you know the communist party in hong kong um, intervened and tried to back up the workers and then, and then the police, well, because the police took took the side of the well factory boss, and then they cracked down on the workers. So it be so the the police and the communist uh, party uh, um, clashed, and then things become escalate. And up till a point, well, I just give you some figures that in that half a year nearly more than 8,000 bombs were placed in Hong Kong. Wow. Mm -hmm. And well, of course, no, not all of them are real bombs, but uh, more than 1,000 are real bombs. And some are fake bombs, uh, but well, just these figures will give you a picture how, how extensive and how big the scope is. So as I said, it's, it was a taboo when I, when I grew up in Hong Kong, because you know, as I said, is a uh, is because of the corruption of the British government at that time, the British colonial government. But uh, so before 19, uh, 1997, the British government did not want to talk about it because it's it, yeah, as I said, it's not because they, uh, they were corrupted. And then after 1997, the the left party, the Communist Party, didn't want to talk about it either. Because at the end, you know, the um, uh, it's about how the riot uh, uh, died down. Uh, it's because at the uh, towards the well towards the end of 1967, when they when the left when the leftists start to place bombs on the street, uh, you know, people's mind, well, people's sympathy towards the leftists have uh, vanished. So the the, the general the general public becomes think well they start to think that well is 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 not good yeah to use such violence and in fact some some innocent people were killed by the bombs and so people's uh, uh, attitude towards the uh, the leftists have changed and it I I I, I would say that it have left a, a, a scar uh, on the mind of general Hong Kong public. So starting from 60s, I think when, when I grew up, we had some, we have already some, we have already had uh, negative um, feelings towards the Communist Party, especially after, after this and also after so much 
uh, information about, for example, the cultural revolution and the, the, the stuff like that, we, we start to learn about that. So we have some um, fear already in, in our mind. So, so after 1960s, 1997, the, the new Hong Kong government, backed up by the uh, mainland China Communist Party, they didn't want to talk about this history either. And so that's why I say it is a, it, it's a taboo in Hong Kong history. So I think uh, documentary theater, um, when, I learned, when I learned about this particular form, I, I, I think I was attracted by it because I think it, 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 it created a bridge between the society and the theater. So, and I think it is a good um, uh, way to find out what is the truth in a particular well period of the history, especially something about like 1967, when you know different sides have different takes on on this particular incident. So uh, in 2014, I made this uh, documentary for the work 1967. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so I think it, it gave you the, the, an idea of what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. So this documentary theater, or as Carol Martin wrote about or coined, you know, the theater of the real. Yes, yes. Um, you feel this is a tool that is working in Hong Kong? Yes, at least for me, <laughs> yeah. I think it helps me to, to understand um, the situation in Hong Kong, especially now when the situation is so, so fast changing, you know, and, uh, um, and uh, when I look at the, um, of course, I, I also get, got some encouragement from the audience that, for example, like 1967, um, when I look at the questionnaires by the audience, they gave me a very positive uh, uh, feedback that it helps them to understand this important part of history in Hong Kong. Because it's not, well, it's mentioned in the Hong Kong textbook, but there's only a few lines about it, and it didn't say much. <laughs> And mm -hmm. so, yes, and I think, as I said, is is but it, this history really uh, affects how we view, uh, um, how we look at the Communist Party, how we look at the leftists in Hong Kong nowadays. And in fact, the, the reason why I did this play, one of the reasons why I did this play was because of this. You know, when I did it in 2014, just before the umbrella movement. I think you've heard of the umbrella mm, movement. Of course, right? yeah. Yes, and I, I, I well, uh, you know the umbrella movement, I would say it's not, of course it happened in- um, Maybe say a the, few words for our listeners who might not know uh, about oh, the yes. umbrella movement. Uh, the umbrella movement is, is uh, well, it's in around, it happened in, in September uh, 2014, when, you know, people, in Hong Kong, we want universal suffrage. Uh, we want our, uh, uh, yes, we want our to, we, we, we hope that we can have a vote uh, to, to get our own legislative council members and also our own uh, chief executive. So uh, some people start to think that we, we, we can do a sit in, in, you know, in, in central, that's the, main uh, economic and political um, center of Hong Kong, the central, we call it. Um, then people uh, want to do a sit-in and a, 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 well, a non-violent protest. And uh, yes, but you know, the government won't let this happen. <laughs> so uh, they, they, they take, uh, they want to take the um, protest, protesters away and then people start to fight. And then at that time, people start to use umbrella to, yeah, to fight against the pepper uh, bullets and also the tear gas. And so it becomes a symbol for, for that movement uh, for, or you can say revolution. Mm -hmm. um, I think there's a very symbolic picture in, uh, in the times when in the cover of the times yeah. Uh, yeah, when a protester, protester um, 
holding um, an umbrella amid uh, the tear gas. So that's why uh, that's the umbrella movement. And you know, we, the umbrella movement happened in, uh, in, in September in one day, but in fact, it's, it's, it, it, it did not just happen in one day. It's, uh, it's in fact an, a culmination of the, all the discontent, all the, dis, all, all the anger of Hong Kong people against the, um, against the government for 20 years after, after the handover, after the 1997. So it's an explosion at that time. And I think after, uh, a few years before the umbrella movement, when I uh, did, people have, have started to talk about that, well, the situation in Hong Kong was like the eve of the situation uh, in 1967, before the riot. And so people start to compare the two things, the riot in 1967 and the, 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 the coming, well, the coming protest uh, of the umbrella movement. So I was born after the, um, I was born after the 67 riot. So I, I was wondering what's the similar, similarity between the two? What's the difference um, between the two? So I really want to find out that I want to find out the answer to this question. And I think the best way to find out the answer is to talk to people who have really been through that period. So I start to talk to some, um, you know, NAFTIs who were students at, uh, who were students and then who were thrown in, who were thrown into prison in 1967. And then I talked to some, well, retired uh, policemen. And then I talked to some scholars uh, about, well, the scholars on this particular subject. And, and of course, uh, general Hong Kong public, uh, 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 and yeah, try to uh, put together all their views on this history. And I think it helps me at least help. It helps me to to get a, a clear idea of what's happening at that time and why we why why we have this feeling or or this fear towards the mainland China um, in this particular time. Uh, yeah, so, um, yes, so I think I, I, I think it helps and I continue to do this thing in Hong Kong. Mm. So, so it's a deep engagement with history. I mean, the word story, of course, isn't history in itself. So, but your, your search for truth is then in the documents, it's in the interviewing and creating a, um, uh, uh, um, a version on stage that shows your your view of history that is not the official one. And do you feel um, that uh, your theater work and this work of your colleagues in Hong Kong in, in theater were they part and of these uh, fight against injustice, fight against sort of in a way of oppression or taking away liberties? Uh, is there a connection or do you feel it's an isolated, theater companies are a bit more isolated and people don't come or it's not as significant? How is, how is theater, what's the role of theater in Hong Kong? I think in general, in Hong Kong, the theater, uh, my colleagues, we are all, well, you know, I, I don't want this as over as uh, simpli simplification of the situation, but you know, in Hong Kong, we, we have this label now, uh, uh, yellow and blue. <laughs> I don't know, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. well, that's uh, like a, uh, the yellow means the liberal and then the blue means the conservative and the pro establishment, the blue. Uh, but what, what, to, to put it things in a simple way, I think the general, in general, my colleagues are all yellow, I would say. Yeah, we, I think we all understand that uh, without freedom, without, yeah, an open uh, uh, environment, uh, theater won't survive and won't thrive. So uh, we, well, especially nowadays, we, I think that, that well, starting from last year, we have issued Kindness uh, uh, announcement, uh, declaration of our situation, our, 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 our of our stand 
against um, you know the against the government's uh, uh, suppression of Hong Kong's um, protesters. So, uh, but of course, in in terms of our um, production or in or in terms of our performance, in terms of our, our styles, we have a variety of styles. Uh, documentary theatre is my is my take, and uh, of course, there are some other colleagues who are also interested in this form, but. Uh, we we try to tackle or we try to tackle the situation in um, different ways. I would say. Hmm. So, were you participants versus theatre scene participating in the demonstrations, which we all looked at? It went around the world, and I think the world's eye, or really the world that's perhaps closer to the world of liberties and freedom, is very concerned about Hong Kong. And uh, well, but were yeah. you participating, were, were theater artists participating in the demonstrations? Yes, of course. Yes. You know, as I said, there were, there have been, well, starting from, it's already a year now. Yes. And uh, I think more or less all of us have been to uh, more than one demonstrations, you know. Um, uh, you know, we have social media. Most of the time, Facebook is quite popular in Hong Kong, and every time when there was a, a demonstration, my Facebook has been, was was watched by my colleagues because everyone was giving some message and uh, asking people to come out and sharing some photos in, during the the the, the, the during the demonstration. So it's obvious that we well we. Every one of us has been to at least one of these mm. demonstrations, and um, so every theater artist smelled the tear gas, ran away, um, and uh, and uh, put in a way also their 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 life. And well, in, we, I think we have at least one or two this kind of experience. Mm -hmm. Yes, and yeah, it's a it's a sad situation, but uh, well, that's the that's the truth. I would say. And I know some of our colleagues were in fact arrested. Um, one of my actors in the production last year was arrested. And mm -hmm. what happened to him? He was in one of the demonstrations, and uh, and then he, well, of course I can't say much, but uh, I I I, was, I wasn't in that situation and. But I don't think he's a violent type of people, so mm -hmm. I think he just went away, and then he was, and then he didn't run fast enough, and then he he was caught by the policeman, and then I know he was really charged of uh, being involved in the riot, you know. So yes, yes, there, there's I've heard of some not. At least not one, not 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 just one incident. Yes. So, well, he said. Mm. So, do you see your theater as an as a work of activism or political work during those riots? Would you continue to do theater, or do we say we pause this and we participate in the movement on the streets? What? What role do you think the theater should play in such times? Um, I think that there, there, there have been times that we, well, especially during last year, there have been times when we really had to stop rehearsals because, for example, like we, we think we should go on street to part participate in the demonstration instead of rehearsing in the studio. And there have been several times like this, or uh, during rehearsals. Then, then we found that we we heard that there was a a serious uh, clash between the protesters and the police just near our studio. So I think we better evacuate. <laughs> and so there have been situations like this, uh, but I think I will try to look at the things in. Uh, in a separate ways, I think is I, I I would say I'm 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 
I'm not using the theater to provoke the, a particular person or a particular um, government body. Uh, of course, I'm not using theater to please them uh, either. And I think to me, theater is a place for me to think. Um, and I would also like to, uh, to use theater to invite the audience to share my thinkings and then to think with me. And then we try to find some answers uh, to a particular questions. I think that's the role of theater to me. And um, I, I'm, I don't think is what well, I don't think is 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 uh, that well, the major function, or at least to me, I, I I don't like my theater to 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 be a tool to point a finger on a particular person or a particular body. And yes, so so I think they are. Because it's very dangerous if you use a uh, theater to just to to promote your own ideology or or your own statement, then you know the 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 the, the tyranny, the the um, totalitarian government will use theater in this way. So it's a very dangerous um, position to take. I would say. Um, I rather have my theater as a place to to invite the, invite the audience to think together. Yes, mm, it's a, a beautiful image that we have the audience come to the theater to think together with you in that moment. Um, when you and how 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 is it in like freedom of speech? The new maybe we should go to this new announcement that came from China, right? which is also so big on the headlines here and uh, um, about new laws and that will supersede laws by far what uh, Hong Kong protesters were protesting against. Uh, do you feel this will be a, a new phase of? Um, of um, taking away uh, liberties, your liberties as a theater maker, will you be able to do your work how you want to do it? I think uh, it's definitely changing. Um, but the, 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 the set situation in Hong Kong is that most of the resources uh, in the art sector uh, were controlled by the government. For example, like uh, all the theater, nearly 80 to 90% of theater um, of theater venues were controlled by the government. Mm -hmm. So as I said, for example, like in this situation, when, uh, as I said, my, my, I have a play uh, coming in mid-June in uh, um, the next two weeks. And we, we can't, but the situation seems better and we, uh, a, a week ago, I, I was still hoping that we can really do it in the theater and have live audience in the theater. But then the government said, no, we, you can't have live audience. Then we have to, there's no way we can do <laughs> because the theater was controlled by the government. So I think that's the sad situation. Uh, when you it was have, politically motivated that they said you can't do it is a political decision. Some people say this. Because my play is going, uh, the, the, the play I'm going to put on is called um, 2047 uh, multiply eight. It means that I, in fact, I, I, it's already, uh, I planned it uh, a year or two ago. I invite uh, eight uh, playwrights. Uh, some are more senior, some are fresher. And um, I invite them to write a play on what a short play um, about 2047 Hong Kong, what they project. Um, when those 50 years are over of uh, supposedly uh, uh, freedom. Mm -hmm. Yes. And, um, and then, uh, yes. And then I put together, took all the eight short plays together in one night. And so people, well, so, so that's why, in fact, I have some, I have heard some people saying that, well, it, was it a kind of censorship um, that, that they try to stop you putting this on stage? 
and well, I I try to think it's not. <laughs> I try to think it's not. Um, uh, yes, I I I I I wanted, uh, uh, but I, I was uh, I hope that is out of best intention of the government uh, to really be very cautious about the situation, so not open the uh, public venue uh, in a rush way, and uh, I try to think in this in this way. <laughs> Yes, mm. because you know the theater situation in Hong Kong. I, I won't say the theater is not that popular as the film industry. You know, we have uh, compared to the total amount of population, we have quite a small number of uh, regular audience in the theater, and so I always think that is. I don't know whether it's lucky or not, but we, because we are we 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 only entertain a, a small number of audience, so that the mm -hmm. the government won't bother to, yeah, to mess with us, you know. So, mm -hmm. uh, so That's up till true. now, the theater companies like us can still survive. <laughs> uh, for example, like last year, I have done a play, another documentary play about. A very famous uh, politician in Hong Kong that's called his nickname is uh, Long Hair, and he was a famous uh, politician and he was a famous anti um, uh, anti establishment politician, and he will well um, uh, he will for example when when he was a legislative council member he will throw things in in the meetings. And of course, it's only a kind of gesture. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and he's, he, when I when I uh, got to know him, he's not in fact a very gentle person. He's not that violent person, but it's, it's, it's only a gesture to attract people's attention. And so he was famous for this kind of well violent uh, uh, behavior in the in the legislative council, and. That production was, we got subsidy from the government, you know, the mm. leisure and cultural uh, um, services department. That's, that's the major department in the government, uh, which is responsible for the arts or theater or performing arts uh, related things. And we, we got subsidy from them. Um, but now, if I submit this application now, I am really not sure I can get subsidy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, uh, well, the situation is 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 not optimistic. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, that's uh, that's interesting. So in a way, it's an economic censorship, as we hear from Hungary, where um, just the uh, theaters were closed, festivals say you can do the festival, but we won't give you any money three days festival, you could maybe then do one show. So there is, a, of course, it's a political um, agenda behind it. And we heard from our colleagues, Guillermo Calderon in Chile, who said we were on the streets, we were protesting. He said 400 people, mostly students, got actually shot in the eyes. <clears throat> he thinks intentionally police was instructed to frighten people. And uh, people were demanding changes for the women's day. A million women came out on the streets and protested. And he says five days later, COVID came and the government shut everything down. The same police that were shooting at us now pretends to protect us. <clears throat> but he says very clearly, um, it is not in the interest. Uh, what's the interest of the government is not our interest. Jalila Baka in Tunisia said the same. Uh, she said, you know, that uh, the COVID um, uh, crisis, you know, was uh, used also to silence the voices um, what is your impression of these new uh, legislative initiative from China that was announced a few days ago, which uh, seems to be openly against uh, uh, the agreement uh, with, with the UK for the 50 years? What will happen? Will, will um, the COVID sanctions be reimposed in case there will, people will go back on the street? Will people go back on the street? Was that working? What is your evaluation? People have gone back on the streets. 
just yeah. a few days ago. Yeah, just last mm -hmm. Sunday, there was a big uh, 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 protest on the streets and uh, more than 300 people were arrested. So, uh, yes. So I would say the corona, the, the, the corona but situation- airports, like airports were, um, you know, occupied and was like a that much larger context and the demonstrations now, what do you think will, will happen? I think the clash will escalate, definitely. So especially when, you know, the one year anniversary of the, the 12th of June is coming. Last year uh, on 12th of June, um, people were, yeah, people went into the legislative council, I mean, the protesters. And that was a major, um, well, that's, that's a significant date in the history of this uh, uh, protest. So I think when, yeah, yeah in, in view of the, this, this day is coming, um, I, I, I think that violence will only escalate. And until upon that, people will die. And I think I, I really, we don't want to see this thing has happened, but uh, well, that's the outcome. That's the most possible outcome. And when people die, uh, in one way, people will be silenced, of course, but the anger will be there forever, I would say. And uh, yes, just like the June 4th in Beijing, yeah, more than 30 years ago. Well, in fact, when this movement uh, start and escalate in uh, uh, last year, people have start to compare this to the June 4th movement uh, in Beijing. Uh, for example, like in November, when when there was a big clash between the protesters and the police uh, in the universities in Hong Kong, in the two universities, one is in the Chinese University of Hong Kong and one is in the Polytech po Polytechnic University. And uh, well, the, the comparison between June 4th and Hong Kong situation was very comparable. Mm -hmm. And well, we, no one will want to see these things happen, but it seems this is a, it's a no return way. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you think a point where you could return is, has been crossed and um, what will you do as a theater artist if this continues, if the clashes get more violent? Um, if China will not back down, what will what will you do? With, what should a theater artists do in that situation? What are you thinking about? How to react? Um, of course, we we have to make our stand very clear, and so as I said, we have what well, our colleagues have have gave uh, have given. Kang's uh, announcement or declaration on our stand. And uh, I think we, we have all signed um, a lot of um, this kind of uh, declaration. And what I, what I think what we can do as a, not just as a theater artist, but just as a human being, I think the best we can do is try to, I think life is more important somehow in a way um to to really persuade people not to sacrifice so easily um i think sacrifice in a meaningful way is good but um i think it's yeah if you just go into yeah is 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 no point in sacrifice um in this yeah mean, meaningless uh, sacrifice i would say yes and i think that that will be some way to 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 overturn the situation, but maybe not upon us. Um, it may fall upon the 
well, if I if I if I have this ability to overturn the situation, I I won't be here. I think. <laughs> and, uh, but I think we as a theater artist, like um, like what indecents have taught us, uh, we have to we the one of the major things we can do is to keep the spirit going on, like indecency. You know, uh, when I think the most loving, touching moment is at the by the end, towards the end of the play, when you know the two girls, the two characters, um, the two lesbian lesbian characters who were were escaping from the line in the concentration camp in the mind of uh, you know the stage manager, and I think to keep this spirit going on. Uh, to, to, yeah, to 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 try to keep it not dying. I think that's our one of our major responsibilities. Yes. Mm. The theater has to be on the side of life, and then we also have the to be, yeah, have yeah. to be pragmatic. Yeah, and we have to be. We can be. And we have to be a torch in darkness, I would say, uh, a candle or a torch in darkness. And that's what we can do. Hmm. Yes, yes. Yeah. What motivated you, How, looking, going back for your, your own life and your own history when you said, I'm, I am going to do theater? Um, what was the moment? What when did that happen? What is uh, you were born in Hong Kong and uh, yes, I was yeah, born in Hong Kong. So in this city where you live now, and you say my contribution to this community life will be theater, my theater work through theater of the real of the documents and telling the truth, looking for the truth. What what made you do that? Uh, I, I think in the beginning it was when I was studying in the secondary school and. We, I, I was in a boys' school, and we didn't have a drama club at that time. And but one day, while well, well, I was in a Catholic school, and um, one day, one uh, because it's a kind of anniversary, the school's anniversary, and uh, oh. one of the teachers want to put on a drama about a, a, a saint in in a Catholic saint, and he's written a, a play about this real person and then as i said we didn't have a drama club at that time but i was involved in some public speaking contests and or debate or debate contest so the the teacher thinks that oh you 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 won't be shy from uh, being on the stage so that he picked me up on to get on the stage to play this main character and of course at that time is um, when one was young is uh, the kind of attention I, 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 I got from the teachers from the fellow fellow uh, fellow students who made me want to do more drama at that time so uh, and then I was getting into the university, and I, I my major at that time was in uh, was English, and my 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 classmates say that I, you you are not you are not majoring in English, you are majoring in drama because most of the time I I, I spend my time in the drama club instead of in the class. So at that time I I realized that I was. I fell in love with um, drama, with theater, because I found it's a, a kind of a great joy to really work together with a lot of people. And and in the beginning, I tried all the different positions, uh, designers, actors, and playwrights, and uh, stage managers, all the different positions. And then I realized that my my tech uh, is in directing. So it I I enjoy. Um, the joy comes from the fact that you, I'm, I'm leading a, a team. It's like, it's like playing in a football team. So you are working together with all these p uh, different people, and then we are trying to create a, a, an, an artwork. And then, as a director, you, I can, I can have the luxury of sitting in the audience, in the auditorium, and feeling 
um, the breath of the audience, uh, feeling the situation of the audience and how my work communicates with the audience. So uh, it is, is it, yeah, it, it gives me the pleasure of being like a visual artist. I look at my, my work and it's finished and it's communicate, communicating live with the audience. So I realized that I like theater this kind of communication. Yes. And so that is interesting. So the story of a saint uh, was at the very beginning. What kind of saint was that? It was, uh, you remember? Uh, uh, I think it's, I, I, I really forgot, is a saying, 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 or I, I forgot, I forgot the name. Mayos, yeah. Hmm. But yeah, Bethlehem Mayo. And, uh, I, I really forgot the story altogether, <laughs> but well, anyway, <laughs> yeah. So, so it's, it's, it's interesting. Yeah, the, yeah it yeah. all start because of the that saying. <laughs> mm -hmm. Also that connection of theater to a spiritual life and the origins of theater are very close to, to that and that we share um, um, these, um, these uh, spheres and we interpret words and uh, show them and perform uh, perform theater perform magic that's why a theater also often was was forbidden you because you did you know uh, ritualized uh, actions on a stage that um, have a symbolic meaning like uh, a real one so what you do is uh, is of real um, real importance and um, will you find ways to um, include this experience of that COVID crisis. And you also were in confinement, I, if I understand right, right? You spend time alone. Do you feel something changed, something happened? Will you use something that came out of that time? Did it make you a different person? Well, definitely that time has helped me to, to read all the books. <laughs> I haven't read. I haven't found the time to read, mm -hmm. and uh, it, it it gave me a lot of ideas, uh, new ideas to to make new plays. Uh, new what ideas? What ideas? What what are your new ideas? Uh, well, for example, like a, a book called Factory Girls is about the situation of the well, the Factory Girls in mainland China, mm -hmm. and. Um, well, this uh, uh, and I read another book, a Chinese. Uh, uh, well, that book is uh, no, the English book is not here. But there's another book uh, similar to this. Uh, it's also about the, the situation of the factory workers in, especially the female factory workers in mainland China, starting from nineties. Um, I think it 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 can be a very good. Um, material for musical, you know, <laughs> and well, you have a factory, a fixed scenario, a fixed scenery, and uh, you have a lot of girls, <laughs> and uh, some of the stories uh, in the books are really touching, and, mm. uh, and yes, and amazing. So I think, yes, I, I, I'm, I'm juggling with the idea of, um, adapting it into a musical. That's, mm. that's, one, that's one thing. And, uh, and, and another play I have read, that is this one, Are You, or, Are you Now or Have You Ever Been? Uh, it's a play, it's a very old play by Eric Bandy. And it's a documentary play. It's about the, it's about the, you know, the investigation of the show business by the Un-American Activities Committee during 1947 to 1956. I'm very interested in that, part, that, that, that bit of history in United States uh, because I think to a lot of people, the United States seems to be a very liberal and free country, but that the McCarthyism period is a very, um interesting period yeah for me and 
well, of course, Arthur Miller has written something about it. And, and, but this play, this documentary play by Eric Bandy, um, well, it, it makes me think of the situation now in Hong Kong, in fact, yes. Mm -hmm. I think one day maybe we will have this kind of uh, activities committee, maybe un, un Hong Kong activities committee, maybe I think we will have something like this one day. So mm. we better get prepared. It's the time to get prepared. So in a way you look at, you know, class, uh, working class uh, situations uh, to f turn focus as a theater, but also as our society, something where we really should look at it, the conditions of factory workers. I think Joël Pomerat in France did great work in great plays next to many others, of course. I think Mnuchkin's very, very first work, the, the Kitchen was about women and kitchens. And, yes. uh, and um, so this is an important uh, turn that next to a theater of a real or documentaries. Uh, also yesterday, Patricia Cornelius from Australia said, I was so, I'm so upset. I'm so full of rage also. Um, and uh, we, what about these people, the minorities, the working class, the race, how we treated Aboriginals? What you know, she says, we have to tell these stories and be brutally honest and not try to um, please us or others. And, uh, and I think your work then um, also goes there. And yes, and to America, that seems to be so easily in condemning uh, uh, China. You say, what are, what are our own histories and, uh, and, um, and where does that fit in? And, uh, so, but it is a bit frightening to think that this McCarthy era will come to Hong Kong, that there will be blood and dead, death on the streets um, of Hong Kong, that it seems inevitable. And that as an artist, perhaps, I think Hannah Muller once said is where are sometimes artists are like dogs on a highway. They can, they disturb the traffic, but you know, you're run over, you are, uh, uh, you know, have to get, get away from the cars, you know, but they see something that is nature or that is life. Um, itself, so it's a it's a it's a complicated um, complicated time, you know, for you there. And we really think about you and uh, what solutions um, you found. What inspires you? Do you have what theater artists? If you're working in Hong Kong, what theater artists are of significance to you? Where do you look at inspiration from? Uh, why now? Uh, I would say well. Uh, maybe yeah, document in terms of documentary theater let me portrait was my was my it, it, it opens the door to me to Say documentary again, who? theater uh, let me portrait oh let me project of course yeah it this opens it opens the door to me mm -hmm. yes and uh, uh i i didn't see the i didn't see the production itself um i i was informed by a colleague who has seen the production in new york in 2001 Mm -hmm. And uh, he was amazed by, by the work and particularly amazed by the process of the work. And he told me about the process and I was, it, it was the first time I heard about this term documentary theater. Because when I was studying in, you know, the Hong Kong Academy for Performing Arts, we, we didn't teach documentary theater. It's unheard of um, this particular, particular term. And yes, so I was attracted to it by, because of the learning project. And um, in, why now? I would say, uh, I think a, a lot of different people can be, can help me, can inspire me. Like for example, Mido Rao, I think you have talked to him, right? Yeah, Mido Rao, yeah, yeah. It's truly and significant. When many, when many political people, mm -hmm. I think they, they, they have done some very interesting work. And, uh, but I would say, I, I, I won't say, but I, 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 would, I would say they helped me to see, to try to think, to push myself to think more. Yes, to, to yeah, to, to find some, always find some new ways to, to tackle a situation. For example, like um, after, after, after 1967, um, I tried to, because you know, in documentary theater, you always, most of the time you start because there's a, a particular incident you want to, you want to find out the truth about a particular incident, like Larry Me Project, because there's a murder. 
So you want to find out the truth, mm -hmm. uh, like uh, 1967, because there's a riot. I want to find out what's happening. So you you have a particular um, incident to that. Um, uh, then I think is it a must. So I uh, I, I made another uh, um, two works. One is on um, real estate agents. One is about. Um, you know the journalists in Hong Kong. So for in these two works, I didn't have a particular incident. I just want to focus on a group of two, uh, a particular group of people. So can I make a documentary play just from talking to this particular group of people? And yes, so I think, um, for example, like Remini Pro Protocol, I think they, they is is interesting to see how they think about an issue. They will always find some interesting angle um, to go into to think about an issue. I think that's that's the way I have to learn from them, and I I can't just copy their method. I have to try to put it into my own context. So, yeah, for example, like, uh, what about art in Hong Kong, the work I did last year, at, towards the end of last year, in December last year. And I, yeah, I, I try to use a little bit of thinking of the, you know, immersive theater, this very popular term nowadays, you know, mm -hmm. and try to put the audience into well, direct interaction with uh, the cast, with the actors somehow. So, I think that's an interesting take, but I think it, it can not every production can use this form. Mm -hmm. And uh, for example, like I, 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 I'm another another production I'm going to do by the end of next year. Well, hopefully, if I get a subsidy, will be about social workers in Hong Kong. I want to talk. To, I want to talk to the social workers in Hong Kong. Um, the reason why I want to talk to them is, you know, uh, especially after, especially last year in the beginning of the this protest, the social workers becomes uh, their role becomes quite prominent. Even some social workers will really stand, will really go into the battlefield and then stand between the policemen and the protesters and try to try to soothe the situation. Of course, in, in the eyes of the policemen, they think they are not soothing the situation. They are aggravating the situations. But, um, you know, there are some really brave social workers who have been doing things like this. So I'm interested in talking to them to, yeah, to really know what was in their mind. And yeah, so so I think for this particular production, maybe immersive theater may not, may not, I, I'm not sure now. It all depends on the materials, but I think it may not be one of the uh, tools I will use. Um, yeah, so I think this kind of um, mindset, uh, being always in question and challenging yourself is a, uh, is important to an artist. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. do, do you feel connected in Hong Kong to the global theater world? Do you feel world pays attention um, to the work of theater artists in Hong Kong? Uh, yes, at least. Um, for example, last year when I when the protest was um, <clears throat> uh, was really serious and I, I got uh, emails from people in Australia, of um, people in Germany, um, I mean colleagues, uh, artists in Germany, artists in Australia, who will ask me about well, my situation in Hong Kong. So I think people are, especially now, they when social media is so popular, internet was so popular and we uh, we are still in the spotlight, I was, I'm saying, and that's that's really fortunate. That's really good. Uh, that's very really important, I would say, uh, for for you, for people outside Hong Kong to keep an eye on this situation. Um, your concern will help, I would say. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
So it'd be important for the international theater community to stay in contact and be with you, maybe for the remedies of this world and meet Milo Rao and Moises Kauf, maybe go to Hong Kong and help you in a situation that is existential, um, as it seems from here, your actors on the streets, they are arrested, uh, there's tear gas, you predict, you know, large civil uh, unrest. And the censorship um, that uh, will uh, not only just look at the actions, but of what's in people's minds, you know, there's kind of dangerous uh, uh, predictions. And, um, and I think, you know, we should find ways to to get engaged, maybe invite them and uh, or, and also um, and, um, be there. And we are coming slowly, uh, you know, to, to, towards um, the end. And um, from, from your experience, um, and I know we have, you know, so younger artists uh, listening, but also emerging or seasoned ones, but what, what do you say, how should this time, which for you almost is over, um, should we work used best? What was meaningful for you? And what should theater do coming out of this corona crisis? What should the stand be that theater takes? Wow, um, a big question. <laughs> um, I, I, I think the two things I have that I have talked about before were during our conversation, one is always to to think that you can be a candle, you can be a torch in the dance, and I think this kind of spirit is very important. And um, I think trying to try to ask the audience to think with you. Uh, is important because especially nowadays uh, when it's so easy to get it's so somehow so cheap <laughs> to get um, entertainment uh, to be entertained um, but I think theater of course theater can be entertainment and theater should be entertaining but I think that should be that should not be the only thing, the only function of theater. And so I think to really, to ask yourself to be more than entertaining is important. Um, that's, yeah, that's, that's one thing. And, and to challenge yourself, um, always to find some new ways to challenge yourself. I think it's important. Um, uh, uh, I better not name names, but uh, you know there have been some some masters I I I I, I worshipped when I was young. Uh, some some master artists, and I well when I look at the textbook is wow this artist wow it is so wow they are really it seems they are really good they are they are great and then but when i really have a chance to see the work in the theater and maybe the first one the second one the first few ones i was i i, I was still thrilled by their works but then mm, after a few i think that mm, it seems that they are getting well they are only repeating themselves and uh, it's, it's, it's sad to see these things when an artist couldn't find new ways to or couldn't couldn't escape couldn't let himself go out of his own uh, out of his own box um, so yeah try not to be this kind of artists <laughs> try to be challenging. I think that's important. Hey, yes, thank you. This is uh, truly um, significant advice and everybody really should take it to heart. And also coming from you in this moment in between Corona and 
in the new political situation where uncertainty is uh, for you um, even so much of a higher potential um, than for us, you know, we are not really used, I think, in the Western world and the American world of uncertainty. That's what any artist did say. And if you live in Africa, you're in Palestine and in, uh, in Ukraine, uncertainty, wars, uh, you, you live with this, with malaria, where no one cares, people die, but uh, for us it is new. And to, also for you then also to be in, in the middle of these two rocks that seem to, to um, grind, you know, uh, the people. This is a, a quite something. So your, your advice is serious, your work is serious, and uh, we uh, admire you for what you do. It's a great contribution to world theater, global theater. You stand in line of great theater makers from Piscator and on to so many others who have started this work of uh, looking for the truth in the way of the documentary of this theater of the real. Hans T. Lehmann did say theater is a house. It has many rooms and documentary theater, theater of the real is a significant room, perhaps a room that at the moment has answers and approaches, you know, in the variations of a Rimini protocol and Mila Rao, as you say, that are really good answers, or perhaps they even have the better question. And I like your idea to say theater is the space where you think together, you don't entertain, you don't consume. It's a place where people come and think together. So hopefully also our series makes a little contribution. It's about listening and about thinking. I think it's something we can do in this time. Also with our bodies, perhaps we all listen a little bit more careful than we normally do. So really thank you for taking the time. So past midnight, past uh, one o'clock and um, and to our audience also really uh, thank you for 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 tuning in after such a long time now I know some have come back it's now nine weeks and um, but we also hear that once in a while a talk that's being caught but that makes it makes a difference in the lives and it makes new connections so this makes us of course happy but we feel it is an important duty now for us to listen, to support artists, give comfort, and also really to, to support and um, encourage. And um, this is our message uh, to you. And, um, and we think um, of your work in, in Hong Kong, and it represents something very, very special. We at the Siegel uh, continue again for next uh, week, and we have the lineup uh, together. It always uh, um, takes a while to, to put it in, but uh, Monday we have a significant artist uh, from, uh, from France. We have Emmanuel Desmarsus Mota, who is uh, the director of Teatro de la Ville and also runs the great and legendary festival d'Auton. And uh, who knows what will happen in the festival d'Auton? We know the Avignon was cancelled. The greatest, perhaps, celebration of theater in life and uh, from the scope. Uh, and, uh, and Emmanuel uh, will, will tell us a bit about the situation in France where things also are reopening uh, as we speak. Theaters, movie theaters, and it's a big experiment. And we will see what will happen. Uh, South Korea is now taking step back again. So um, we, we will see uh, Ralph Pena from uh, New York City will uh, talk uh, about his uh, Asian American theater company, a great uh, contribution he has made over decades and, um, and now the challenges his community faces. And if we have learned anything, minority groups uh, have been hit hardest with everything over, over centuries in countries over decades. And now with the corona, they are the ones who are on the front lines. We had African-American playwrights who said our families getting together and making their wills. We don't have money, we don't have health insurance. Our people are the ones who work in the hospitals, who are in the service industries, who are the delivery drivers and we have no choice and uh, we are the one getting hit and we don't know what will happen. Um, Wednesday, we hear uh, from Israel and we have Ruth Kenner, the great Joshua Sobol, uh, Maya Arad Yasur, all three of them, three generations of Israeli writers who hopefully will help us to get an insight in the complex histories um, of, uh, of theater of Israel and also the, the, the state now uh, of uh, COVID, it seemed to have been very successful there. Uh, in that team, but we, you know, what is theater? What does it theater mean in, at that time? So this is uh, important. Avra uh, Sidiropoulou uh, from Greece, a uh, great scholar who also has been at the Siegel Center. She will a director, also works at the university. She will come and tell us about Cyprus and Greece and uh, the, um, the, the situation um, there, and where also the uh, histories of migrants and uh, refugees is uh, so much more urgent uh, because of the 
geopolitical location of the country and um, and Ashley Tada from uh, from New York City who just did a very beautiful production a work of art I think on uh, on, um, on on screening where she invented perhaps a message to uh, combine a theater play and a film but it's a play in its life and together with her collaborators they in some software and codings they she found a way to save a piece that was supposed perhaps not to go online and not to cancel it came out of Bard College but Gideon Lester as we understand right said no go on we pay you anyway do what you want and she said I'm going to find a way to do this work and it was a quite a, astonishing work I think so we're going to hear a little bit from her about that work she's also a student of Anne Bogart so it's another generation trying to work with the challenges, but also with this new medium where we are both on now. I remember uh, 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 Feng, uh, Han Chen Fei who said, uh, you know, we all thought cyberspace isn't real. And now it looks like it's one of the real spaces left here where we, where we communicate. So uh, thank you all for listening. We're coming to the end of this week. And we are very concerned also here in America about the situation and uh, what will happen even if the lockdown is over, when the restrictions are lifted uh, post a traumatic stress, a traumatic stress, what will come in, what will be come out, how will the society react? Uh, it's uh, full of question marks and um, and um, and we uh, have to be, as you said, as a theater artist on the side of life, of support and understanding and seeing all the different sides of the stories and help people to create meaning in this difficult time. Thanks to HowlRound again for hosting us uh, for all these weeks, uh, uh, VJ and uh, Thea, and Travis and the Siegel team, Sun Young and uh, and Andy, um, thank you all, listeners. You know for for taking time out of your uh, busy lives and um, for really also listening to our artists. It's also it is as Shai said, it is important to know that people care, that compassion is out there. We all in the same situation, so this is an important contribution, and we hope that what they say to, uh, is also meaningful to you and makes a difference in your life and helps to grapple and understand the situation we are in. So hope to see you all or hear from you on uh, on on Monday. Hi, all the best with your work. I hope the June work will 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 be done or will work out with the little audience of 10 people. I love that you do it in your own studio instead of not doing it at all. And um, and uh, so stay tuned, stay safe and